there are four ways in which we function, and only four ways, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, and intuitively or, or spiritual. Let's put that together. And or, and or a combination of them, of course. But those are the four basic ways. Physically means materially, how, how, you, how you function, how you walk, how you talk, how you act uh, in, um, uh, in, in your mannerisms. Um, what you do, uh, your, your, uh, how much how much money you make, for instance, is, is, a, is a physical function. Um, uh, how you dress is a physical function, and uh, it goes to some people's uh, occupation. For instance, uh, you know, a surgeon, uh, uh, an athlete, uh, uh, somebody who uh, works with their hands, a carpenter, or, or a, a mason, an electrician, um, or anything you might do. You cull the garden, you water the lawn. I mean, those, that's, that's physical actions, okay? Uh, and of course, there's different levels of it. There are different athletic achievement, there's, there's different ways of, of looking, you know, taking care of yourself, whatever. The next one is mental. Mental is simply IQ, cognition, right? Um, and, and that's that's your ability to um, look at uh, information and uh, understand it, and take it take it in and uh, um, categorize it. It's, it. it's it's really knowing, right? The next one is a, a very big one called emotion and emotion is feeling now emotions and we're going to talk a little later about uh, about emotions but uh, emotions uh, can work against you or it could work for you emotions can fire you up and uh, make you achieve something that you ordinarily couldn't achieve or they could water you down they can they can make you miserable they can turn your uh, objective into a disaster. So knowing how to handle um, feelings, uh, such as like what we talk about with political correctness, um, is, is critical. The worst thing I've discovered, 35 years of this research, is trying to hide your emotions in the sense that um, hide them from yourself uh, is, is the worst thing that you can do. So um, if you are a sloppy dresser and nobody tells you uh, or says anything to you because it's politically correct not to address the fact that you're a sloppy dresser, um, you're going to be a sloppy dresser. But if somebody says to you, in whatever fashion, you're a sloppy dresser, whether they're saying it uh, as an insult or whether they're saying it as a corrective criticism, uh, the way in which you respond is critical because what happens with emotions, emotions have a lot to do going back to focusing and beliefs. When you introduce emotions into what you're focusing on or what you believe, it's going to make it stronger or weaker. So um, that's part, uh, the, these are all part, when you start putting them together, which we're going to do soon, when you start putting them all together, you'll see that um, uh, emotions can make or break your, your day. And let's get back to political correctness for a second, because that's, it's very important. Um, it, whether or not somebody says something to hurt you um, should not be taken uh, subjectively or um, or personally. That's the mistake we make uh, on this planet. You should take those things as uh, objective and you should take them as impersonal because you learn by them. You learn that there's something that you need to address. And if you don't believe that this is something you're going to address, then you shouldn't feel bad about it. But if you understand that there is something that needs to be addressed, 
that's going to make your emotions work for you rather than against you, okay? All right, so now we move on to intuition or what I call spiritual intelligence, okay? Uh, intuition is something that we all have. Some of us, uh, of course, have uh, any one of these four to greater degrees or lesser degrees. But intuition is, is something that, that a lot of us have, uh, but we don't trust. Now, the difference between intuition and emotion is emotion, as I said, is feeling. Intuition is sensing. And after a while, when you're involved in something such as like a business or a relationship, you sense things. Um, I, I can, I can, in my earlier days in real estate, after I got my feet on the ground, I would drive around the neighborhood and I would, I would be able to intuit uh, that there's something going on on this street, maybe even on that house. I wouldn't understand why I, I, I knew that, but it was my intuition. And when I followed it through many, many times, a lot of times, it, it was accurate. Okay. So that's part of, of intuition, and that's something that, that should be uh, addressed, and you should try and develop that. But just as equally important, and uh, maybe even more important, is what I call spiritual intelligence. Spiritual intelligence is being in touch with the universal energy. It means that which we all have. So it means that when you start to reach out for that, and, and by the way, one of the best ways of doing that is like, for instance, practicing yoga, especially like Hindu yoga, it, 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 it truly enables you to connect with this power, this, this force um, that enables a higher level of performance. Now, if, if you think about this, when you look at... Um, for instance, a football game, okay? And you say, well, um, th these teams are pretty much equal, but you know what? The home team has the advantage, and the reason is because they've got the crowd behind them. Well, what they're saying is that there's a this energy, this electricity, that the crowd is going to generate to assist uh, the team in performing at a higher level. And in actuality, if you, if you talk to uh, odds makers, they will relate anywhere from two to three points in the football game for that, uh, for that factor. That, that's a big advantage. That's the type of power that you can generate on a daily basis. And I sure hope you do. On to the next chapter.